The future will not be held in your hand, and it won't be on your face either. The future of technology might almost be invisible. This quote is from Humane CEO Emron Chowdhury. Humane has been one of the buzziest and secretive startups in Silicon Valley. With Apple alum founders who created things like the iPhone and the iPod, you can see why it's garnered so much attention. Yesterday, the first look at the device from Humane, an AR projector that fits in your pocket, was leaked on Twitter. Is this the future as we know it? Is this the iPhone killer? Let's take a look. Humane has been a very secretive company up to this point. We knew they were working on a hardware device, but weren't really sure if it were related to a pair of glasses that you wore on your face or some type of projector. There hasn't been much on their website beyond some buzzy videos that feel very Apple-esque, and up to this point there haven't been any leaks. That changed yesterday at TED. Humane was founded by two Apple alums, Emron and Bethany, who co-founded the company after creating some of the most iconic products that you know, like the Mac, iPod, iPhone. And Bethany was involved as a director of software engineering, and together the hardware and software pieces that we know make Apple products special is something that they'll also bring to Humane. A big focus of Humane up to this point has been about bringing humanity back to technology. This idea that software, hardware, and ourselves should work in perfect harmony and not be something addictive that we scroll through. And with an extensive team of designers, builders, manufacturing, and people from all across different companies and experiences, it's pretty neat to see the wide range of experience that has come to define this team at Humane. Yesterday, after a TED Talk from founder Emron, the news publication Inverse was able to get some exclusive looks at the device. Now, if you want to hear any of these clips with the actual audio, all the ones that are here in the video are in the article that I'll link down below. In one of the first examples that were shown, you can see that Emron receives a phone call from his wife. He looks down at his hand after he lifts it sort of close to his chest so that it can display on his hand. There's a little bit of movement here from the shakiness of his own hands. You can see it hovering over his palm, and he proceeds to take the phone call. It's unclear how he was actually able to trigger the acceptance of this phone call. You'll notice he didn't actually move his other hand over or press any buttons. Maybe it was listening to his voice to know that he wanted to actually accept the phone call. You can see him pull the device out of his pocket here. It looks about the size of an AirPods case, and I'm wondering if this were actually using some types of magnet on the back end to keep this attached, or if it was just sitting in a custom-made little pocket, but it's something that will definitely have to be thought through. We don't often have a t-shirt or something else that would perfectly put this here, so if there's any type of weight, this is going to feel really weird on something like a cotton t-shirt in the summer. I also wonder how the AR projection would actually work somewhere outside where you have to play with things like sunlight and it's not a dark TED talk room. Emron gives the example of being in a new city, that maybe you don't want to be fumbling with your phone. Maybe it's easy as just pushing a button on your chest, which he does so in the demo. After a brief couple of moments of processing, you can see the device starting to blink and it outputs French for what he just said in a very similar accent to his own. He goes on to note that it is based on his own voice and so that is helping the model translate really well into an accent that sounds like himself. A pretty neat feature. This must all be happening on device so they've probably got some sort of processing chip. One big thing about this device is that you don't need a smartphone to use it. I'm curious about this device if it's all happening on the device itself or if it is connected to cellular. Think about using this if you are traveling, doing some type of translation, but I'm not sure how much people actually use Google Translate, which has pretty much the same functionality. Emron demos might be helpful for people who have office type jobs. He asks the device to catch him up on his day and the device spits out a bit more details about what he's missed, some emails and some notifications around maybe meetings that he had. The ability to catch you up on your day is a pretty neat feature. I do wonder though how much this would be used too. 
with our email inboxes being a giant clutter of mess. I'm not sure that I would be too happy if the summary here given on my day was you missed 15 emails from Nike and Amazon.com with new promotions. This also seems like the type of thing that is nice, but usually when I get a summary, I then want to do something from that. And not being able to see those emails, I'm not sure how I would actually be able to do anything from here. I'd then have to pull out my phone or computer anyways to take another action. What might be a neat feature here is actually having this device listen to the conversations and things that I've done throughout the day so that I could then get summaries of things that I forgot to do, something that someone wanted me to pick up at the store, or a work colleague who was asking me to complete some task that I forgot. If you haven't seen my video on Rewind AI in your own personal Jarvis, when I saw this device, that's all that I could think about. What if this device was intelligent enough to be my personal AI assistant? In the final demo that we see, he gives the example of allowing the device to see what's in front of him. So there must be some type of camera on this device where it can look at things in front of you. He picks up a candy bar, which he then proceeds to have the device let him know if he's able to eat it. Maybe this would be useful for people who have dietary restrictions, and he goes on to say that he's going to eat it anyways. It seems interesting, but for me, just not that useful. I don't have dietary restrictions, and I'm not that concerned with being able to discern if I want to eat the object in front of me or not. So. For me, this just really isn't that helpful, so I don't have a lot much more to say about it. Now, in an interview with Emron Chowdhury, he says that the experience should be screenless, seamless, and sensing, allowing you to access the power of compute but being present in your current surroundings. There's a balance that for now feels out of place because we're reaching and looking at our cell phone. Not sure I agree with this entirely. Looking at my hand with some air projection is cool, but I'm not sure it's that different from looking at a piece of glass with the same information. I also start to wonder about how this will look like in sunlight. Will it track my hand? How close does my hand have to be to my shirt? It's just a bit of an awkward motion to have your hand that close to your chest, but maybe I'll feel different once I test it out. And for the device itself, the speaker sounds loud enough, but I'm sure that was just for the demo. I can't imagine being in a crowded place and actually wanting to have my device talking out loud like that. There'll have to be some sort of headphones this is connected to, so unless they're working on their own headphones, I'd imagine that they really want this connected to some type of wireless headphone like AirPods. I'm not a hater on this technology, and I'm not a hater on Humane. I actually am really excited for where this is going to go. It's always great to have competition in the space, and you can see the AR world is heating up with things like Humane's device and the upcoming device from Apple, rumored to be a pair of glasses. I think this is great for the human technology relationship to evolve beyond screens. It does demand something radically different. We need innovators, technologists, and people like this team who are trying something radically different so that we know what works and what doesn't. Over time, I'm sure this will get better, the device will get smaller, and there'll be new ways to tackle this challenge of all having us be a little more present and less consumed by the screens that we're looking at. I hope you enjoyed this quick look at Humane. I can't wait to watch the full TED Talk when it does come out. As always, if you like these types of videos, please hit subscribe and thanks for watching.